Mornings. It's Monday, February 21st, 2022. Coming up on the program today, an Olympic athlete suffers from frozen penis. A Christian minister is worried about men looking at his panties. Michelle Duggar is keeping track of all the afterbirths and a leg amputation in the park. All this was your voicemails today. Distorted View Daily proudly presents a mother catching her son watching porn online. I have to have your dad talk to you about this because mom's not very good about no, it. No, mom. I, it's, listen. Mom, I was searching I around. I was searching around the... I was searching Why around... Why are you playing with yourself? I was searching around the listen. internet. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Listen. No, I, I, was, you're curious. I was searching around the... Oh. Mom. Mom, I was searching around the internet, and all of a sudden, I I was downloading this thing, and I got a computer virus. I want to see it. Show me what you were downloading. I randomly, I already, I deleted the virus. No, you did not. I have to have your dad go through all this. I got scared because I deleted the virus. No, you're embarrassed. No, mom, for real. Listen to me. You don't play with your I didn't. Oh my god. You don't get it, do you, Mom? Mom, you don't get it at all. I did it! I can't slip! Ah! Yeah, they did! Oh my god, Mom! I had a computer virus and I got scared that I had the virus. And when I was getting out of my chair, my pants were slipping and I was pulling them off and getting back on the chair. I got scared, and and my pants slipped down a little, and I was pulling them up. I had a computer virus that led me there. And then the virus scared the crap out of me by leading me to that stuff. And then I was getting off of my chair because I thought the virus would spy on me or something with my camera. Oh, my God, Mom, I'm telling the truth. I'm telling the truth. The Distorted View Show with Tim Henson. <laughs> Woo! I'm gonna lose my mind today. Don't miss the great snatch. I need dicks on a regular basis. We have to enter the mad dog equation. <laughs> Tim Menton back here with you to start a new week of programs. Got a great show for you today. Just a quick note on the Level 80 Memorial. Uh, That hasn't happened yet. I started working on it, and you freaks have been great. You helped me track down Level 80 Cat Lady's first voicemail into the show. Did you know she used to be uh, called Sweet Pea or something like that? That was her first DV username. And then later on, she changed it to Level 80 Cat Lady. Just a little piece of trivia for you. Also, uh, I tracked down that interview show I did. This, by the way, was her idea, not mine. She was like, Tim, you should uh, talk to me about the time I was raped. And, you know, all my medical problems and stuff. And I uh, I kind of reluctantly agreed. At least that's the way I remember it. I'm pretty sure my feeling at the time was, here's a real person talking about her horrific sexual assault not sure how i'm gonna make that funny dv is supposed to be a bit of a comedy show and look freaks we've had a lot of fun with rape but never in front of the person who has been raped i do that shit behind people's backs i'm a coward but somehow even though there were serious moments it was kind of a fun show i'm thinking about starting a new comedy podcast called so you've been raped I just talked to uh, sexual abuse survivors and see how funny we can make their story. I'm up for that challenge. Anyway, I'm going to keep chipping away at the Level 80 Cat Lady Memorial, and I will give you plenty of notice when I'm ready for, like, calls into the show or voicemails or whatever. Truth be told, I was kind of exhausted uh, this weekend. I needed to take at least one day off to sort of decompress. I don't know. It's uh, very unlike me. But I felt stuff this weekend. Normally, this cold, dead heart doesn't react to much. But uh, I, I, I just have been thinking a lot constantly about our fallen comrade. So I just, uh, I wanted to veg out for a while. But now I'm back. I'm refreshed. We've got business to tend to. And oh my God, this couldn't have come at a better time. We've got a nude meat. A nude. Oh God. We do not have a nude meat skeleton. That's right. Mead has let me know that he has set up an OnlyFans. 
for that spicy mead content we've all been asking for. I can't tell you how many times I get emails from people saying, hey, you got any pics of Mead Skelton's bitch tits? And I say, yes, I do have quite a collection. Mead finally understands the demand, and he's going to monetize those flabby udders of his. Come on, Mead, whip out those milkers. Uh, No, we've got some new Mead content in the form of a video. If there's one thing I believe uh, Mead has been affected by, Due to the uh, almost constant mead coverage here on TV, it's when I refer to his music as Yankee Doodle Dandy music. He doesn't like that. He takes offense, and he's mentioned it multiple times in his videos. That's why, instead of his oom-bop-bop honky-tonky bullshit, this time around, Mead's new song is a rap. Our boy is branching out. Ladies and gentlemen, here is Mead Skelton and the No Mask Rap. I ain't gonna wear no mask, not me. I ain't gonna wear no mask. I I just feel like I should mention he caught COVID. His dad caught COVID, probably from Mead, because Mead was just walking around the house without a mask on. While he had it, his dad had to go to the emergency room. I'm sorry, intensive care. And he's like hooked up to oxygen and shit. Go on, Mead. I ain't gonna wear no mask because I was free. I ain't gonna wear no mask. I see people walking around like monkeys at the zoo. This ain't no communist China. You can't tell me what to do. I think I know my body a little better than you. This is the whitest rap since that old dude was spitting rhymes about catching STDs. Yo, safe sex is just a fantasy. You lose more than virginity. Thousands catch an STD each day, so if you're smart, you're going to say no way. When you have sex with just one lover, you're having sex with all the others. This is way better than Mead's rap, right? I mean, just composition-wise. We haven't even got to the part where he starts listing off the STDs and its symptoms. Gonorrhea leaves very few clues. Two million have a lot to lose. It attacks their organs, tissue, and bones, and damages reproductive zones. Syphilis claims thousands each year. Little red dots soon disappear, but it keeps on growing inside of your brain. You can end up blind or even insane. Now, compare that to this. And I'm covered by the blood of Jesus. I ain't gonna wear no mask, not me. I ain't gonna wear no mask. I ain't gonna wear no mask, cause I was free. I ain't gonna wear no mask. You just get the sense when he says eyes free that it's like a racist thing. You know, he's rapping. That's the black people music. You can know. wear your fight face diaper anytime you please, but it won't block a cough or a sneeze. The big government has you down on your knees, and that's all you can do. I'm taking back my country and my freedom for me and for all my brothers, sisters who want to be free. Look, I know there are a lot of opinions on mask wearing, when they should be worn, when they shouldn't. Uh, COVID numbers are dropping. Is the pandemic coming to an end? Yada, yada, yada. But if you're diagnosed with COVID and you live with a like 98 year old, maybe don't breathe on them. Maybe wearing a mask in this instance is just a smart idea. Instead, Mead nearly killed his father just so he could say, the government don't control me. I do what I want. What a fucking fool. He should just rap about his life. That's way more interesting to me. Oh, there's a lot of good content to mine there. I used to ride horses with a girl I like. When she found out, she took a hike. I found out later she ran for the border when I ignored that restraining order. Now I'm just an incel with balls full of semen, even though I was raped by a lady demon. Here I sit, a corona denier. How can't you see Dr. Fauci's a liar? Then he could do verses about the Confederate statue and constantly working on his hair. 
What is he? He calls that hair maxing, right? Relaxing, hair maxing, hating on the blacksin, wishing the girls would notice me. Cha cha, whatever. If you want to hear Mead's full rap, you have to become uh, one of his patrons, and I will provide a link on the show notes today. You want to throw Mead a, a couple bucks so he continues to do what he does. I don't want to say best, just what he does. Uh, it's also interesting to note this is not Mead's first rap. I uncovered a song that Mead recorded at a very, very young age. It always don't it. God is doing a new thing. It always don't it. God is doing a new thing. God, Mead's always been able to spit fire. Or maybe it's dropping bars. I don't know. Mead's good at both. Who's doing it? God is doing a new thing. It always doing it. Yo, who's doing it? God is doing a new thing. Oh, I've got one more Christ-related clip I wanted to share with you. And I think this is a pastor that Mead would approve of. In the past, we heard about how Mead had to leave some of the churches he attended because they got too liberal. They actually condemn slavery. Not the kind of church I want to be associated with. No, I think it's because the church started letting gay people go there or something. I don't know. Something just didn't sit well with me. Anyway, uh, this pastor I have a clip of here. His name is Phil Kidd. Take a look at the chapter artwork. That's Phil. And if for some reason you can't see the chapter artwork, you got a guy wearing dress pants and a white button down shirt. That's all well and good. The real problem seems to start at his Confederate flag tie. And then it moves on to the boxing gloves he's got on his hands. Also Confederate flags. Yeah, this is a preacher Meade can get behind. This clip is from a, a few years ago, back when Obama was still in office. I mean, I probably don't have to tell you that this dude was not a big fan of Obama. But for some reason, his sermon was about 9-11. And then he got talking about airplanes. He doesn't like airlines. He also has a breathing issue. He breathes very heavily not even doing anything he's not screaming he's just sort of he's winded and i'll be honest i i don't fly much i don't like stripping down to my panties in front of these fat people and i'm feeling all over me then you got to get an x-ray machine and hold your hands up and some pedophile faggots back there looking at your body amen why have we never featured phil kid before he's got no filter I find it interesting that, you know, he's worried about pedophile faggots looking at him. Meanwhile, he talks about stripping down to his panties. Macho guys don't call them panties. You know, he's into some weird sick sex shit. Has anything come out on this guy? I got to look him up. Yeah, I'm, I'm sick of it. I'd rather drive. I'm going to drive. Ain't nobody going to look at my fruit of the looms. I'm sick of it. I think we finally discovered the real identity of that radio show host named Ghost. They sound remarkably similar. And honestly, the content is similar as well. No more fruity asses. Nobody who, no, no look, engineer, let, let's get this straight, all right? I don't want to, I don't want anybody who sounds like they popped out of the anal passage of Richard Simmons during a sweating of the oldies video. Do you understand what I'm saying, engineer? I don't want somebody that sounds like they like a couple of foreign objects in the pooper. Do you understand? I hope the engineer understands because Ghost made that crystal clear. Anyway, back to the uh, preacher at hand here, Phil Kidd. Yeah, I'm, I'm sick of it. I'd rather drive. I'm going to drive. Ain't nobody going to look at my fruit of the looms. I'm sick of it. <laughs> By the way, that underwear bomber, now I know he, he, it didn't work, but if I was him, I'd hang myself tonight. Because I'm going to tell you, I'm not living the rest of my life being known as the underwear bomber. <laughs> I'd rather die. Almost like Go a to heaven. Comedy routine. It's 78 virgins anyway. <laughs> So I don't like flying. I get on a plane, I tell every Muslim, you're going to the bathroom, I'm going with you. I don't care if they like it or not. I don't know what they got stuffed in that pamper on their head. It's a little offensive, right? You can always tell if they're a real Muslim, you can smell them. Very offensive. They smell like the camel that they rode to the airport. <laughs> well, that's Phil Kidd. Some of y'all looking pale, you don't like that, do you? Go ahead, vote for Obama again, you idiot. And when the election's over, leave the bumper sticker on your car because you, you can park in handicap because you're mentally afflicted. Is this Jim Brewer's new comedy special? I may have gotten the clips mixed up here. 
Now, as I mentioned, uh, that clip was from a few years ago, back when Obama was president. I wanted to see if Phil Kidd was still a preacher, and sure enough, he is. And for some reason, selling hair care products on his ministry's website. I shit you not. Go to drphilkid.com. The very first thing you see on the page is New Horizons Hair Products. All natural, true botanicals, minerals, proteins, color, and carotene safe pH balance from shampoo to conditioner to detangler to New Horizon style and shine. Don't you want silky smooth hair like Jesus Christ himself? By the way, it should be noted that uh, this man is bald. He has no use for this stuff. Now, depending on the picture you find of him, uh, his his hairline is never in the same place twice. I think sometimes he wears a toupee. I don't know. Doesn't matter. Point is, not every fucking preacher can sell miracle water. This guy's switching it up. I'll give him props for that. All right, uh, moving on now. This next clip isn't religious per se. It does have to do with the Duggars, though, and they're super religious. So uh, a listener in the Discord posted a 911 call placed by Michelle Duggar. No, this has nothing to do with her pedo son. She would never call the cops on him. Come on. Apparently, her daughter Jess gave birth. I don't know if these people believe in going to the hospital or not. I haven't read what the quiverful stance was on science and medicine. I got to think they're not a huge fan of those things. They're pretty ass backwards. But anyway, so Michelle Duggar is calling 911 uh, just, you know, to give everyone a heads up that a birth took place in a house. Someone is going to need to come here and pick up the placenta. Central 911, where's your emergency? Okay, tell me exactly what happened. Mother is bleeding after birth. It's almost like Michelle Duggar doesn't know she's talking to a real person. You know, like when you call FedEx or American Airlines, it's like, in a few words, tell us why you're calling. Mother is bleeding after birth. Okay, just a moment. I think you're calling about a billing issue. Is that right? No, mother bleeding from cunt just had baby. Mm, I'm having trouble understanding. Let's try this again. In a few words, tell us why you're calling. Uterus exploded. Baby's big head ripped open snatch. Extreme pain. The billing department is closed. Call back between 9 a.m. and 6 p.m. tomorrow. All right, so uh, robot Michelle Duggar is calling 911. Mother is bleeding after birth. Okay. We're getting help on the way. I'm sorry? Yes, we need her to be checked out. Okay, are you with her now? Yes. How old? Yes. How old is she? 20. Something. I don't know. We have 87 children. Hold on. Let me do the math here. She's somewhere between 22 and 40. This is what happens when you've had an army of kids. And is there serious bleeding? Um, there was quite a bit of blood, but with the pl- when the placenta detached, uh-huh. but she's uterus is hard now. Okay. I have to believe that Michelle Duggar is heavily medicated. Who else sounds like that when calling 911? She sounds the same in any situation. Many people don't know this, but on 9-11, the Duggars were in town promoting their show. They're the first ones who actually witnessed the plane striking the World Trade Center. I happen to have that 911 call here. 911, what is your emergency? Jumbo jet crashed into building. I- I'm sorry, you said a jumbo jet crashed into a building? Yes. What building? It looks like it's uh, one of the World Trade Centers. You're incredibly calm. Um, Is everyone okay? Uh, No. The people are not okay. Looks like a lot of people are dying. What exactly do you see now? Huge fireball. Where are you in relation to the building? We were out sightseeing. Yeah, I know, but where are you standing right now? At the entrance to the building. You need to leave. Run away from there. You're in danger. 
My husband, Jim Bob, says a part of the wing fell from the plane and has now impaled him. Emergency crews are on their way. They should be there in a few minutes. Oh, wow. I don't know if this is important, but a second plane just hit. What? On a totally separate subject, do you happen to know any good family-friendly restaurants here in the financial district? What? Preferably one we don't need reservations for. We've got a large party of about 30. Wow, she remains incredibly calm. She's a cool cookie. Even more surprising, I can't believe this. Michelle Duggar must be like 90 years old because she was actually on the scene in Dallas, Texas when President John F. Kennedy was assassinated. Now, the 911 system was a a pilot program in Dallas back then, so believe it or not, we've got tape of her calling in this emergency. 911, what's your emergency? President's brain splattered all over First Lady. I'm I'm sorry, I think I misheard you. Uh, What did you say your emergency was, miss? John F. Kennedy's head exploded. Chunks are everywhere. And pump me full of whatever she's taking, Valium or something. Is she still bleeding right now? No, she's better now. Better now. Just a lot of blood initially when you're right. Okay. Okay. Just a torrent of blood. My carpet is fucking stained. Thanks. Never gonna get that shit out. So, uh, Jess is the Duggar that had a baby. In that uh, voicemail clip. Now, her husband is named Ben. He is not a child molester, as far as we know. There's still hope for that revelation, crossing fingers. Anyway, I have a clip here from one of their stupid Duggar TV shows where Jess and Ben visit a recording studio where a Christian singer is working with some producers. Here's a little bit of that. The song they're working on today had part that was sung by V. Rose. The guy talking is Ben, Jess's husband. So say what you know you should say Do what you know to do And this is V. Rose, who is a Christian musician, and she sounds pretty good, right? Now, the deal with this song, it's one of those songs where, like, in the middle, there's, like, a rap breakdown. A rapper comes in for a few lines. I don't know why. I guess the kids like it. They didn't know exactly what they were looking for, so they had a few different guys rap over the song. Tough decisions, yeah, you gotta make. I know it's hard, I feel your whole race. Right, I was like, that's one option. Your heart, knowing that you were told to love when you were not alone. You feel the tug of war on your mind, but your mind is what the struggle's for. That was the second option. I ain't gonna wear no mask, cause I is free. I ain't gonna wear no mask. That's option three. You think it's easy doing the right thing? At least pursuing it so look like a fight scene. But we doing it because of this look. You get the idea. So they kept recording the song, seeing what rap sounded best. And then Jess's husband, Ben, tries his hand at a little rap in the middle of the song there. Does anybody here believe it? <laughs> the producers are loving it. They're like, do it again, do it again. Does anybody here believe that? You know, I listened to the uh, the finished product, and uh, for some reason, Ben's line isn't in there. Every fucking member of that family is a disaster. They're embarrassing for some reason. God, I hate the Duggars. Finally, before we get into the news, for some reason, I love weird voicemails that have been left for people. Over the years, we've played a bunch got another one here for you apparently uh the guy who received this message met a dude once last year had not heard from him since until now and it's a very strange call take a listen hi Chris. it's bradley we met at a locker room so this is like i immediately think this is a gay thing when you like meet a guy in a locker room and exchange numbers is that something straight guys do? It's weird. Hey, hey, hey. At the corporate location in Cottonwood. The way he pronounces that leads me to believe that he's horny and jacking off while leaving the message. Just thinking about the time we met in the locker room at Cottonwood. And again, this you know, these these guys met once. 
at the corporate location in Cottonwood. <laughs> I wanted to let you know that although I missed our chance to play tennis last fall, I will be returning to the Salt Lake City area for... <laughs> he has a real problem with city names. Cottonwood, Salt Lake City. Salt Lake City area for the team, tri- team tryouts. <laughs> oh, it's so cold. At first, I thought he had a speech impediment, but he might be in Antarctica right now. He said it, it's very cold. Maybe his teeth are just chattering. I'm going to have to call you back. I'm ice bathing. Oh. Uh, oh dude. So. Okay. I guess that kind of explains it. I mean, I don't know why he chose that very moment to leave a voicemail. Oh. Weird. Okay, Curtis. Okay. okay. Um, Curtis, I uh, want to extend an offer for another tennis match with you. <laughs> I don't know what the hell is going on here, but it sounds like he's um, telling himself not to crap. He is dealing with some stuff right now. Maybe it's don't tap. Don't tap out. First, um, I think I'm going to have to call you back. Bradley. <laughs> What an advertisement for ice bathing. Curtis, you should totally play tennis with that guy. All right. uh, And with that, let's get into the crazy, bizarre twist. And I fucked up news right now. If you are enjoying Distorted View Daily, please consider signing up for the Sideshow. That is DB's member site. Believe it or not, I do this program for a living, and it's only able to continue thanks to our Sideshow members. When you sign up, you gain access to the entire archive of programs. More importantly, every week we do brand new exclusive shows just for paying freaks. Tomorrow will be a Sideshow exclusive podcast, and then again on Thursday. There's a couple ways to sign up now. Uh, Of course, superfreaksideshow.com. You can choose from a monthly, quarterly, semi-annual, yearly, or lifetime membership. When you sign up, you get a uh, RSS feed that's password protected with your username and password. It works with most, but not all podcasting apps. Still, it's real easy to sign up. Instructions are up on the Sideshow as well. Uh, However, if you don't want to deal with RSS feeds uh, and podcast apps and stuff, and you just happen to listen to Distorted View on Apple Podcasts, you can sign up right in Apple Podcasts. There's a little subscribe button. You'll pay with Apple Pay or whatever. Boom, you'll get all of the uh, exclusive shows. Also working on getting the past archives up on Apple Podcasts as well. It's a work in progress. Finally, if you listen to DV on Spotify, same deal. You can subscribe in Spotify. Oh, I'm making it so easy for you to become a true and honorable freak. Now, three different ways to get Sideshow content. Finally, as another way to support DV, we have a Patreon account, patreon.com slash distorted view. Uh, you can pledge as little as a dollar over there. If you pledge five, you get access to a special voicemail line where I will play your calls first. Uh, people who pledge $20, occasionally I send out DV merchandise. That's happening this month as well. So it's a great time to sign up, patreon.com slash distorted view. This concludes the money begging portion of the podcast. Now let's get into the news. Three very quick stories now. First up. Thank you so much to Bob and Stein for sending in this first story. It's right up Distorted Views Alley in that it has to do with a penis. Uh, a Finnish skier competing in a cross-country event at the 2022 Beijing Olympics finished in 28th place. Not exactly a strong showing, especially for Finland. Like a cold country, right? He should be good in the snow. Uh, apparently, he suffered a very strange condition, one that no doubt contributed to his poor performance. Poor motherfucker came down with a bad case of frozen penis. What exactly is it? Well, it's, it's what it sounds like. It's just, you know, frostbite on your dick, I guess. Reuters reports that Remy Lindholm, a Metallica-loving skier on Team Finland, began suffering frostbite on his cock and balls during the 50-kilometer mass start race event Sunday. The event itself was conducted under such brutal, frigid conditions that the race was first delayed by an hour 
Guess they were hoping things warmed up a bit. Then the 50 kilometer race or whatever was shortened to 30 kilometers to protect the competitors who wore a thin layer. I think it would have been cooler if all the competitors had to wear heavy fur coats, fuzzy mittens, those winter hats with ear flaps, really bundle them up. Everyone would be wearing them so they all have the same, you know, handicap. They're not going to be as aerodynamic, but they'll be warmer. The skier said, quote, you can guess which body part was a little bit frozen when I finished. It was one of the worst competitions I've been in. It was just about battling through, despite the frozen appendage. And, you know, I don't want to come off as some big circumcision proponent here. We've had many debates on this program. But, like, uh, I don't know, uh, uncircumcised guys' dicks are just juicier. You know what I mean? Secretions get stuck in the foreskin. That's the first fucking shit to freeze. I didn't look to see who won this competition, but I bet you the Americans did pretty well. Despite the frozen penis, Lindholm still managed to place in the middle of the field in the 60s skier event. Uh, falling roughly four minutes short of the medal winners, but 16 minutes ahead of the back of the pack. Believe it or not, this seems to be a a, a recurring problem with this particular skier. Uh, Lynn Holmes' penis has frozen mid-race before. A similar incident happened during a cross-country skiing event in Finland in 2021. Immediately after the race, Lynn Holmes sought relief in the form of a waiting heat pack. When the body parts started to warm up after the finish, the pain was unbearable, (laughs) the skier added. Thankfully, Lindholm's injury did not prevent him from enjoying the nation's surprise gold medal in the men's hockey event, as well as Sunday's closing ceremony. All right, I got to know who won this thing. Looks like uh, someone by the name of Alexander Bolshin, oh, a Russian. Well, they cheated, probably. Silver was also Russian, and uh, the bronze medal winner was uh, some dude from Norway. So I was wrong. (laughs) The Americans did not do very well. We came in eighth. What type of medal is that? Aluminum. We won the aluminum medal. I think uh, in general, the United States did not do well in the Olympics. Ooh, how the mighty has fallen. We're kind of like a crumbling superpower. It's sad to see. This kind of leads in nicely to our next story. Us poor people in the United States drive right past Target or even Walmart. We shop at something called dollar stores. Now, even though most of the products cost more than a dollar, it really speaks to the quality of what the fuck is being sold at these welfare marts. It is quite an experience when you step into a Dollar General. It's very messy. Uh, The aisles are super tight. And the products rarely match the labels on the shelves because people just sort of throw things around. Many times it's not even on a shelf. You'll find a can of chili rolling down the household cleaner aisle. I know a lot of us think uh, we're too good to shop at Dollar General, but a lot of you need to face reality. You're slumming it. You live in a garbage neighborhood. You're poor. Don't believe me? Whip out your phone, uh, load up Google Maps, and type in Dollar General. If the closest store is less than three miles away, you live in a bad part of town, honey. I'm not judging you here. As a matter of fact, the closest Dollar General to me is 0.9 miles away. Not only that, but right down the street from Dollar General is a Dollar Tree. And one street over is a Family Dollar. Another dollar store. As a matter of fact, Family Dollar is the subject of our next news story. I always thought that uh, Family Dollar was kind of like a a step up from Dollar General. Just because uh, their stores seemed to be larger, more square footage, which, you know, meant larger aisles. Plus, the name Dollar General just sounds generic, right? Apparently, I was very wrong. Don't shop at Family Dollar. Consume the food they sell and you might die. Just as the coronavirus is subsiding, thanks to Family Dollar, the Black Plague might be making a return. More than 400 Family Dollar locations remain closed as of Sunday as the retailer worked to recover from a rodent infestation discovered at one of its distribution centers. Yeah, in one of the large Family Dollar warehouses where where all the, you know, product is stored, rats got into shit, chewed through stuff, shat all over the place. That rat poop infested merchandise was sent off to family dollar stores. Those are the ones that are closed. Now, uh, the FDA said it first sent an inspector to the West Memphis, Arkansas facility in January 
following a consumer complaint. The inspection found live rodents, ting, dead rodents in various states of decay, ting, ting, rodent feces and urine, evidence of gnawing, nesting, and rodent odors throughout the facility, plus, for good measure, dead birds and bird droppings. Also, products stored in conditions that did not protect against contamination. After a fumigation at the facility, about 1,100 dead rodents were found. Additionally, a review of the company's internal records also indicated the collection of more than 2,300 rodents between March 29th and September 17th, 2021. So this has uh, kind of been an ongoing problem. Concerns the unsanitary conditions could have contaminated food, cosmetics, medical products, pet food, and other products sold at Family Dollar has prompted a massive recall. It also led the chain to temporarily shut down 404 stores as the effective products are purged from the shelves. Uh, The closed stores are all in the states of Alabama, Arkansas, Louisiana, Missouri, Mississippi, and Tennessee. Woo, us here in Ohio dodged a bullet. Quote, our teams are working hard to reopen these stores as soon as possible. That's according to a spokesperson for Family Dollar. Oh, shit. It's actually Family Dollar's parent company, Dollar Tree. See what happens with all these goddamn corporate mergers? Eventually, they're all going to be owned by one company, and that warehouse is going to get infested by fucking rats, and no one will be safe. Once stores reopen, customers who purchase affected products will be able to return them for a refund without receipt. So wait a second. Uh, You're spending all this time, money, and energy to decontaminate your stores. Then when they reopen, you're telling people to bring back the contaminated products. They thought this one through. Good fucking grief. We take situations like this very seriously. Situations, plural, like this has happened before, uh, and are committed to providing safe and quality products to our customers. We've been fully cooperating with all regulatory agencies in the resolution of this matter and are in the process of remediating the issue. Oh, check this out. There's a phone number here. Brad Carter, take note. (laughs) Customers with questions about the recall and potentially contaminated products can call 844-636-7687. Brad Carter should call and say he found some live rats in the dog food he purchased, and he's not sure if he needs to return the rats to, but he kind of wants to keep them as pets. You know, I'm sure he could come up with a good prank call premise. All right, uh, final story we have for you to do. This is a short one from Australia. A man has died and another has been charged with murder after an alleged horrific late night, quote, arrangement involving a circular saw. I'm sorry, if there was an arrangement in place, I don't think you should call this murder. Sounds like the dude who was killed with the circular saw kind of wanted it. See exactly what happened here. Police uh, allege that two men who were known to each other drove together to Fitzgerald Park that's over there in Queensland, and they sat under a tree at 3.48 a.m. on Saturday. This already sounds like a dangerous premise. It's 3.40 in the morning. These guys are drunk and bored. One of the guys has a circular saw in the back of his truck. It was only a matter of time before someone's head got cut off. Guys are just goofing around. Uh, About uh, 20 minutes later, after the men were talking, uh, the guys made an arrangement that turned grisly. Police say a 36-year-old man used a circular saw to cut off a 66-year-old man's leg below the knee. It's better than the alternative, right, freaks? You know what the alternative is. I've injected my knee with uh, my feces, 120 cc's under my kneecap, just liquefy it and pump it in. By the way, the guy who injected the feces, that's exactly what he wanted to do. He wanted to amputate his leg. He thought if he injected shit in there, it would get all infected, and then the doctors would, uh, would you know, would, would amputate it. A circular saw also gets the job done. The difference is uh, the guy who injected feces, he lived to tell the story. Circular saw guy, though, um, didn't. The younger man helped the older man back to a car before he fled the scene on foot after allegedly using the older man's own saw to carry out the botched amputation. The older man was found by passers-by in the street and was pronounced dead when emergency services arrived a short time later. The younger man was charged with murder on Sunday morning, which I don't agree with. This old guy wanted his leg cut off. He provided the circular saw. 
The only thing the young guy did was exactly what the old man wanted. Cut my leg off. After that, you know, it's it's, uh, it's in God's hands. Detective Acting Inspector Gary Hunter, ooh, good name, said police would allege the men were known to each other, but the nature of the relationship was still under investigation. Quote, police believe there was an arrangement between the two people for the amputation of the leg. During my 34 years as a police officer, I've never experienced a situation as we're presented with here. Detective Hunter could not speculate on whether drugs were involved or provide any detail about the exact nature of the arrangement. Ah, he's an older guy. His leg was bothering him. Either he had the diabetes or maybe just some orthopedic issue. I don't know. He just wanted that leg or foot. Maybe it was just a foot issue. But he was like, just to make sure, let's cut it off at the knee. That way I can get a peg. I bet you that was part of it for him. He wanted that peg leg. All right. uh, There you go. That, my friends, is your distorted news for Monday. Let's do a couple voicemails and get the hell out of here. Love to hear from you freaks, and there are many ways to contact the show. Show at distortedview.com. I'm all over social media at Distorted View on Twitter and Instagram, Facebook.com slash Distorted View Show. Don't forget, we uh, we have that uh, great Discord where all the freaks are hanging out. It's over 1,400 members strong. Uh, just use the link on the main navigation bar over there at distortedview.com as your invite in. Let's uh, let's try to do some patron calls here. Hey, Tim Haley's comic calling in, and I, I hate to do this at the end of a tough week, but I gotta register a complaint, man. But you can't go kink shaming someone about their sexy Elmo cosplay. Tri- Why do you not sound like Haley's comment? There's you have a new phone, or is that not really you? The Elmo cosplay dressing up like cartoon characters in a consensual way is totally normal and honest for two adults to express their feelings for each other. So, for example, me and Mrs. Haley's Comet, I'm her Dom Daddy, uh, I dress up like Optimus Prime, and she dresses up like Huffer. You know, that little mini tractor trailer from uh, G1 Transformers? And uh, just like in uh, episode 14 of season one, she uh, pulls my trailer, if you know what I mean. All right, sleep with that tonight. I love love you. Thank you. uh, Probably fake Haley's Comet. 90% sure that's fake. Hello, it's uh, Unicorn Hands to checking in. It's Sunday morning, uh, just thinking about Cat Lady. Uh, So, last Wednesday, uh, I was hoping one of you assholes was just joking, but um, damn, uh, I kept reading and it was true. So, uh, it was weird that... uh, uh, it was a character, you know, you don't want to think these problems, health problems or anything is just because uh, I kind of overdo it with the character or I don't know. Uh, what the fuck are you talking about? Either or uh, the little interaction um, in the last few years. uh the little interaction. There's people in your life that come and go. The whistle's go. I'm sorry. Get Hold on. What a fucking dick I am. I haven't train wrecked anyone in like 10 years. The first serious voicemail we have memorializing Love Lady Cat Lady and I fucking train wreck them. Sorry, I'm just joking around. Trying to keep the show light here. Go on. I'm sorry. I won't do that again. Yes, go uh, ahead. Go ahead. You know, there's certain people that stand out, and uh, Cat Lady was one of them people that stand out. Uh, it was somebody that I could talk to about the show, kind of like the ambassador to Timmy Boo. I never want want to bother Timmy Boo, but if there's a question, I can help. The whistle's go. I forgot how much fun that is. Your call is not train wreck worthy. I'm just, uh, I'm just playing around, trying to lighten up the situation. That here. lady, and she would be more than happy to talk to me about the show or get anything organized or take on new ideas, anything like that. So when you know, kind of hurt me that day, and uh, realized like, damn, it's more than just a comedy podcast. It's so that's it. I just wanted to 
What's that noise in the background? Share my feelings, my thoughts. So weird. Uh, uh, the little interaction. And I'm telling her where she was. Oh my so, god, I'm so sorry. Man, this guy's pouring his heart out here. Yes, uh, we we all love Love Lady Cat Lady. Just wanted to we rewind that so we can hear share him. my feelings, my thoughts. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Um, the little interaction, and you kind of wish you were friendlier with people like that. So sorry to make your phone call into a bit when, as you're pouring your heart out, like I said. But, you know, when we do the Love Lady Cat Lady Memorial, you can call back and I'll be serious. I promise. I won't train wreck you. Hey, Siri, remind me to train wreck Unicorn Hamster when he calls in to the memorial show. It'll be real funny. I'm a little stinker. Anything else you want to say, Unicorn? Man, I'm happy. She was a lady freak and... Uh... Damn, pr- pretty much like the time that I started calling in, she started calling in too. Yeah. So it was a certain bond. And uh, same thing with Vlad. Well, anyway. let's hope he dies next so you can call back and um, I can train wreck you again. That's it. Because um, the freak shit must keep happening. I'm sorry. I gotta do it. I gotta do it. I have to do it. It's just because the call is so long and you are just so easy to train wreck and it is so satisfying. I am getting so much enjoyment out of this. All right. Let's uh, turn our attention to some older voicemails. So I can't believe I'm actually going to say this, but I am going to agree with Haley's comment, <laughs> provided that was actually him Hold and on. not one of the clones. But you I'm deserve this to too. Everyone's getting train wreck today. You get a train wreck, and you get a train wreck, and you get a train wreck. I'm mad with power. Mad with power. Sorry, you agree with Haley's comment? What? Haley's comment. Provided that was actually him and not one of the clones. But I'm listening to an older episode from October, the end of October, and you're talking about fluid bonding. Uh, It is actually very popular within the swing community and poly community. I used to be part of the swing community, which was a very gross community to be a part of. (laughs) And now. Everything about it sounds gross. The term fluid bonding sounds gross. I am part of the poly community. Uh, which fits my life and lifestyle a whole Whoa. lot better. Uh, and any time I have barrier-free partners, um, we mm. usually use the term fluid bonded Gross. or barrier-free or something along those lines. It's, it's it's kind of whatever you want it to be. You know, however, whatever fluids. you're comfortable. Some people think I want your fluids. Fluid bonding sounds disgusting. Yeah, it other does. people. It's, doesn't bother them, and that's what they use. I also find the term boy pussy quite disgusting, but uh, that's just one of my many issues. All right, well, thank you uh, all for the voicemails, especially Unicorn Hamster. Sorry. Uh, that is all the time we have on this edition of the program. Watch, guys, email me, show at distortedview.com. Distortedview.com is our official website. Voicemail line for you, 206-666-4463. That's 206-660-GOD. Is it oh god Mother is bleeding. After birth. Spread the distortion STD to all your friends about the show. Don't forget to rate us and review us wherever you can criticize. Oh, I was told I shouldn't say criticize podcasts. Who told me that? Someone messaged me this weekend and said, hey, Tim, you shouldn't say criticize podcasts because that puts it in people's heads that, uh, you know, criticize is like a, a, a term when you want to say something bad about something. So you should say critique. So, yes. Rate us and review us wherever you can critique podcasts. Look, guys, what I'm really looking for here is a five-star rating and some nice words. That's what really helps us out. So uh, do that for me. I'll see you back tomorrow if and only if you're Sideshow members. Otherwise, I'll be back on Wednesday. Until then, have a great day. Bye, everybody. Also, do a Google search for little Asian girls' feet.
or you'll thank me. This has been another excellent podcast from the Scribe Media Group. Learn more at scribe.net.